Hello and welcome to the Knights Open Circuit, IEEE UCF's official podcast. My name is Brian Smith. And I'm Fernando Riendo. On today's episode, we have Ms. Nicole Ramirez. She's a mechanical engineer in the space and airborne segment at L3 Harris and works in the electronic inspection departments. Thank you for coming, Nicole. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. I'm really honored you even selected me to be here. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. <laughs> In high school, I actually did the dual enrollment program, so I was able to graduate with my associate's degree when I graduated high school, but it's not just like, woohoo, she got an associate's, like I actually finished my math and sciences, so up to DIFIQ, um, the physics with calc, um, so at UCF for engineering, as I'm sure you guys are aware, typically takes five years, not the four years, because you throw mm -hmm. in the here and there so it took me three years to finish um so i graduated may 2020 so it's almost been exactly a year now that we're in the spring semester um and i've been working at l3 harris technologies for almost a year now i started in june um so that's when i'll make a year at the company but i did intern at the same company or harris formerly known um in the summer of 2019 and even though I was graduating May 2020, so I had two more semesters to go after that, I actually got my offer letter right when the internship ended. So I was sitting on an offer for a whole year until actually working at the company, which during a pandemic, you can believe it was the biggest relief of my life because I actually know friends who graduated along with me and even struggled to find a job even after graduating. So it was definitely a blessing in disguise. Uh, I could not be more grateful, um, but but the pandemic aside and all, it's not the whole reason why I decided to go to the company. Um, so I can go into that some more detail. But uh, I did hold another internship while at UCF. Um, it was through my senior design project. So I did, um, it was NASA sponsored. So we were actually classified as NASA interns. So I was like, woohoo, you know, who wouldn't want to be a NASA intern? Um, so that was also really exciting. So I definitely had the experience to decide like, do I want to apply here? Do I want to go out of state um, for, I guess, external circumstances, uh, family related? I definitely decided like I was going to be home. All my family is here in Florida. I'm born and raised in Florida. So here I am, I'm not too far off. Like you're going to, I'm going to be here for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. It definitely seems like the work paid off. I mean, getting an internship right, especially during a pandemic right after you graduate. That's insane. Yeah, it, it was it was really, really great. And um, as you are aware, like UCF at least canceled classes. Like the, when the whole pandemic struck, it was during my semester. So that spring 2020, that's when everything, all hell broke loose, you can say. Um, or we, our transformation of a new reality had hit. So I was pretty bummed out the fact that I didn't get my graduation because I had already bought decorations well in advance um, planning on a graduation party. Um, but my roommate who actually also worked at or works at Elton Harris with me, um, she painted a better perspective for me, which was the juniors at the, that same time um, have it a lot worse. Like I missed out on a graduation or a physical graduation because it was held virtual commencement. Um, but the juniors who had an internship, and I know Fern, you can speak to this as well, yeah. had to lined up and that internship would have led to a full-time offer. Typically, that's how it goes if you do a good job. Um, the internships were canceled. As a result, that means you just missed out on a potential full-time opportunity that was, could have been sitting in your pocket. So that hit a lot harder than a graduation. Like I, I have my job. That's the best thing I could ask for. Oh yeah. No, no, yeah. Like personally, um, as soon as my internship got canceled, it just hit me like, oh man, at least all this time could even sign up for classes. You know, what do I do? I'm about to graduate. I gotta get on it. But it, uh, it really hit everybody though, really bad. Some people that got their full time offers, you know, it got it got rescinded. So you never know. Oh, yeah. it must have been heartbreaking. Hopefully, I know right now yeah. with all the vaccinations coming out and people becoming more educated on the different, you know, steps we can take to prevent any more spreading of, uh, of the virus. Uh, I hope we're on our way out and that way people don't have to continue to deal with it. But also the fact that we are becoming adjusted. Uh, that's a very positive thing. People are working from home. Uh, and for me, you know, being able to 
travel more. I say more, travel <laughs> safely, see my family, et cetera, uh, social distance. But that's been kind of a blessing in disguise as well. Which is how- you even doing this podcast. Like, I think it's phenomenal that you guys even had brought up this concept. Like, you're still giving back to students at UCF and anyone else who can obviously tune into the podcast as well. Um, virtual, it's available on Spotify. Like, that is Amazon. You guys Am- definitely applaud yourselves for doing that um, because it de- definitely touches other students and other people that need to hear it as well. So even though there's a pandemic, we're doing the best we can. <laughs> we are. And thank you so much for the applause. We appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, honestly. How does your um, full time differ from your internship, though, now that, you know, being online and all, or is it online? Uh, So I am working from home primarily, but it's heavily based on the project that you get assigned. Um, So as as you can tell, the biggest difference would be the pandemic. Um, So during my internship, I was on site, was actually at a different facility. So Elbert Harris has facilities all over, you can imagine, even in the UK. So that is so, so cool. Um, So there are definitely opportunities to transfer. I work with an engineer on a project and she's looking to go to Rochester, New York, I think it was. Um, It's exciting. So there's definitely opportunities available. Uh, I haven't, I've been having to go into work a lot more uh, just because of this new project I'm on. It involves testing. Um, So it's a lot more of the physical labor and at my cubicle, the cubicle next to me, actually, there's a, a gentleman that just arrived and he's traveling back and forth from California. Oh, wow. His job. Um, he lives here in Florida or they just moved to Florida um, because his, his kids are going to school here now. Um, so he moved his whole family from California to Florida and he's just going to travel when need be. So I thought that was really cool that the company gives him the opportunity to give, to give him a location to work here in Florida, but to also go back to California when needed. So that is super great. But me personally, I work from home. Well, I started out working from home uh, first thing. Uh, I worked on the F-22 um, fighter jet. That was my first project. So even I'm, even though I'm in the space and airborne systems segment, it is a wide range of opportunities available that you, you can work on. So it's not one specific thing. As long as you're very communicated, communicated to your management, um, they will work to get you the experience you want and, and need. Um, so I didn't really know what I wanted specifically. I just wanted a diversified experience. So the F-22 project that I was on was to design test fixtures. Um, and it was really cool because I started going into physically on site at least once a month. That was what I did. I um, mean, it was just to go into the lab to see how it works in person, to understand what needs improvement. And then I could implement that into my designs. So I got to speak with the electrical engineers. I got to speak with other designers. So it was really cool. It was like, tell me what you want to be fixed so I can understand what I need to do on my end. Um, so it's really, really great. Like I would start off actually by, or go back to saying, the reason why I wanted to go to L3 Harris, even though there could have been other opportunities available, um, was the company culture. I think that was my biggest intent wherever I go. I could find the work. Like I'm an engineer and that feels really great to say, like I'm an engineer now. Um, (laughs) But you can do the work over at Northrop. You can do the work at Boeing. Like there are other companies doing nearly the same thing. But am I going to enjoy what I'm doing if I don't like what's surrounding me or who I'm working with? Um, So I definitely saw that immediately at my internship. When somebody gets promoted, they brought donuts in for the people around you. I don't know why you have to bring the donuts, but it's like, I got promoted. Here are some donuts. <laughs> so uh, there were some holidays around the summertime as well. Um, Fourth of July, um, Halloween was coming up towards the end of the internship and they decorated the whole hallway. Uh, now that we did Christmas in July and everyone just took like their same exact time lunch break to have hot cocoa, cookies. Oh. Um, they did a, a naughty nice uh, list for the hallway <laughs> unbeatable it was like who else does this for for people around like they were so so great so welcoming and the best part is they didn't belittle you just because you were an intern 
Um, they, they held you up at the same standard. If you needed help, that's where the part that differed. They understood that you needed more help because you're just fresh out of school or you're in school at that time. So you had a lot more resources surrounding you physically being on site versus working from home. Um, just the other day, I kind of encountered a problem. It was like, hey, like this building actually does what you need. And I was like, do you happen to know anyone in that building? Because I personally don't. Like, can you point me in the right direction? And then I had this long chain email just to find like the person I needed. And I can't do that. If I was on site, I could have just walked over and said, hey, like, can you point me out? Um, so you, again, that just means you do the best you can. You, you work with what you have. Um, so it's harder to make those connections now um, just because even when I do go on onto site, it's like a ghost town. It, it's kind of crazy. Um, yeah versus when I intern I see like hallways filled laughter like flying around in my office when I interned um I actually shared it with two other interns we had a dartboard that some people would come in because they just needed a break like you're there to work absolutely and we take our jobs very seriously but again you want to enjoy what you're doing you want to take that five minutes just step away clear your head and then once you're back you're back on the grind like you get the job done so it's, it's those those people like that's what I love 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 um, and I can go on forever about that <laughs> it sounds incredible you know not only do they sound helpful they sound like they're trying to build a sense of family w w with this company and I mean like you said I, I know you threw in the uh you know oh we're there to work which of course you're going to the job but but nobody wants to show up to work and feel isolated feel alone feel like they don't want to be where they are and it sounds like you have experienced the complete opposite of that like you feel excited to show up and meet people and it's funny that you know you mentioned that email chain like I know people who who love email chains because they don't have to talk to people they don't have to deal with it but you're like no like I want to go in and build those connections and that's so wonderful it's so refreshing to hear <laughs> It is. And what is more refreshing about it is that those connections can really carry on for a lifetime. I've been adding those people LinkedIn. So the people that I connected with my summer internship, I still have contact. Um, so, and it was partly through LinkedIn. I got my roommate through LinkedIn. I saw that she accepted her offer. I was like, hey, like we interned together. I don't know if you remember me, but I need like, I'm looking for a place to stay over there. And she agreed and was like, yeah, of course I remember you. And then I got a roommate. That's incredible. Um, <laughs> connections are really great, but I think what was, they don't, they don't come easy. I would say that at least now they don't come easy physically. Like I'm an extroverted person. So I was there like knocking doors, like, Hey, like I'm Nicole, like, what do you do? Um, and I can't do that virtually. I'm not going to IM everybody. So you Skype. <laughs> I'm not going to IM everybody. Like, Hey, like, do you want to be my friend? Do you want to come <laughs> Um, that's not how it works. So now the project I'm on now is for F-35. So another still like aviation. Um, but because it involves testing, I actually had to work hand like really closely with an electrical engineer. And yes, I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, but since I'm dealing more, I'm in the electronics packaging department, I had to work with the electrical and say like, what requirements do you need? Like, help me understand this a bit more. And then I can tell you if it's going to work, like, if it, is it, does it fit? Like, we went back and forth with the requirements. And so here I was, I was messaging him when I, got, I knew we were on the same team. I don't know this guy, never met him in my life, probably I'm never going to meet him in person. And so when I had to, like, type the IMs, I typed it, and I, I kid you not, I had, like, anxiety. I sort of was like, click send, click send. Um, oh, and it, because I didn't know what the, the response I was going to get back, like, you don't know what this is you don't know what this does and it's because we had two different titles I was I was mechanical he was electrical so I didn't know if I was asking like redundant questions or just something that was stated obvious um so I was really it was really nerve-wracking um but it was just me overthinking it because now I message him all the time like hi like I have one more <laughs> question let me pick your brain every here and there and he's like you're never a bother he's so informative and every explanation he gives me and it's because he knows like I'm young like at least when we talk on the phone because that's what we revert to now a lot is a lot of phone calls and they, they're like yeah you sound young but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you like in person but you, you do sound young um so they acknowledge that but again it's not belittling at all they're there to help they, they understand 
Um, and they're there just to have a conversation, help you out as well. Because again, we're, we're on the same team. We're working towards the same goal. Um, so I'm really glad I had that connection. I had that exposure to a different department, you can say. It was like, now I'm ex like familiarizing myself with the electrical concepts more than I did in school. So that was just really neat. Um, I'm really glad I got to work on a team and really just get a varied experience overall. Like That's why I chose mechanical specifically, just because I knew like it's not one specific thing. Like now there's the manufacturing side of it. There's the testing. So it, the, the design, that's where the working from home happens. Like design is the easiest thing to do, sit at the computer. Um, so I'm grateful to get that different exposure and not just sit at the computer all day. <laughs> So it's great. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's really great to hear, honestly. I never expected L3 to be like that. I guess in my mind, I still see companies as being like um, just blue collar, you know, just go in into your box and just work. Which I'm sure there are. Um, yeah. and, and that's where it's like, I guess for interns, especially or now during the pandemic, you're kind of ripping mm -hmm. off the mandate and saying like, I hope this company is for me. Um, but yeah. that's like this podcast for example you're having me I'm gonna talk about my company and how much I honestly love it um but it's it's because of those relationships and experiences like I said there are companies that do the same thing or very similar things um but like, those people that is what's gonna make a difference like I don't feel discriminated against you can say like yeah. I'm I'm there I'm there to work and and I enjoy the company so I, I'll tell the story really quick so um <laughs> the so a designer that i was working with on the same project for f35 um i needed help with something and so we're on skype i was like hey like so we use creo parametric uh, that software if you're not familiar with it you know like solidworks i know it's typically used at ucf it's similar to that software so it's a cad software and so I'm on Creo and I'm like, hey, like I encountered this issue. I don't know how to fix it. Um, have you ever had anything similar to it? He was like, yeah, I can help you out with that. Like I had that happen before. So I'm sharing my screen with him because again, it's on Skype. So kind of like Zoom. So I would I shared my screen with him. And then he requested control of the screen to, to click in to, to fix it. And he was walking me through it the whole time. And he was like, yes, I have control. Just like uh, my ex-wife did. And I was oh like, no. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, when the problem was, it was really simple. We fixed it really quickly. Um, and then he gave me back the control. And he was like, I gave you back control. Don't take me to court like my ex-wife did. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and it was, like, it was so funny that they can just be that like real with you and um he told me before that his daughter has the same name as me Nicole it's a very common name and so he was like I spoke to my daughter about you um like I told her that I work with another Nicole and I think you're about the same age like you sound young I never met you but you sound young <laughs> and I was like yeah I'm young and he was like yeah I told her and she was like oh dad I hope you don't say anything cheesy to her and <laughs> <laughs> up like too late for that so. <laughs> oh that's so awesome yeah. yeah you're already like you're just blowing through a bunch of preconceived notions that people have about large companies and and cubicle jobs like it sounds yeah. like you have such a a cool experience that, you, that you've had uh, before the podcast uh, we were actually talking about some of the experiences you have do you want to uh, talk a little bit about about uh, after the companies had merged, L3 and Harris. <laughs> so my favorite story at the company, um, so for those of you who are gonna watch and don't know, so I had to turn that Harris Corporation in 2019, and then they merged with L3 Technologies that same year. Um, so even though my offer was for Harris, it later became L3 Harris with the merger. Um, so the CEO of Harris remained the CEO, um, but the CEO of L3 Technologies is going to step up as a CEO in a few years. So he's like the second most important man at the company right now. And they, when the merger started happening, they started informing everybody, sending videos like, hey, like we want to keep you guys informed. This is what's happening. This is how the executive branches are going to change a bit. Um, so just, just letting us know all the information and the 
attire or dress code that they have at my company is dress for the day. So you, you can essentially dress like in jeans every day of the week if you're going to go in just the manufacturing lab or something. Um, but if you have a meeting, I'm going to assume, like, I would hope you just very uh, business professional. So that's what they mean by dress for your day. Um, but on Fridays, no matter what, when it's a working Friday, because I have the 980 schedule, um, working Fridays are going to be casual Fridays. Typically, you don't really have a lot of meetings that day. And so I took it very seriously. I love, love, love the Marvel Universe. So I'm wearing an I Am Groot cartoon t-shirt on my casual Friday with jeans. And um, being the mechanical engineer, like I have this big, like thick laptop and just an obnoxiously large backpack on my back as well. And so those, I guess, key features, as I'm walking out of the building, I like totally fangirled because I see Chris Kubasic, which is the L3 technology CEO, the second most important man at L3 Harris right now. Um, the merger had just happened like a few days prior and I see him right in front of me. And he kind of did like a look back and then did like a double take, like, oh, I'll wait for her to. So I'm walking up to him like, oh my gosh, I know who he is, it's Chris Kubasic. Um, and so he introduces himself and he's like, hi, I'm Chris Mason. I know who you are. Like, <laughs> um, but I, I, I kept myself contained in that moment. And I was like, yeah, hi, like I'm Nicole. He's like, are you an engineer here? And I was like, how would you know? Like, you know, like there was no assumption, like, oh, you, you do contracts or, you know, like, I guess something that you would assume for a female as you are aware in at least engineering school, like there aren't many women in the STEM field. So I was so, so flattered that he assumed engineering right off the bat. But I do think the t-shirt and the big backpack might have been. <laughs> um, so he walked me to my car. He gave me his business card. And like, it was a really great just conversation that we had. He was like, if you need anything at all, like, let me know. Of course, I emailed him on that Monday saying, it was so nice to meet you. Like, <laughs> um, he re like reiterated, like, if you need anything at all, let me know. So I thought that was so, so great that I got that connection. As he's walking in his car. Right. I wished him like a safe travel to his car because it was going to downpour that same day. He was like, oh, I already started the AC in my Tesla like five minutes ago. <laughs> I was like, okay, must be nice. Like, <laughs> so That's incredible. Cool. And like I said earlier, those chances are, are insane. Just running yeah. into somebody like that out of the blue. <laughs> and you know, the chances are more, I guess, extraordinary. Because I worked at the Malabar facility, which is, is probably like 13 minutes from the location where I met him at was. I was only at that location because it was towards the end of my internship. I probably had like two weeks left. And um, because I was running very low on work, like you have to finish your project. You don't want to really like pass it on to somebody else um, since as an intern you're leaving. Um, so I'm trying to wrap up everything I'm doing. They don't want to give me something too big that'll lead into the end of my internship. So I was there for some short-term work working with my group lead. So the odds were very, very slim that I, I had met him that same day. Wow. It's such a powerful connection too. It is, it is. I still right. have the card and you remember <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh my God, Nicole. Everyone seems so open and laid back. Oh, at least all the stories you've spoken about. Like people yeah. just seem to be, you know, normal people. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> people are people. Like if it was another company or something, and I'm just like, I don't know if I've just been lucky, but I've met uh -huh. many people so far and I have yet to have one single like terrible experience with them. Um, so I, I do have to credit that to the company. I would assume like they just select the really great, like passionate, humbled people. I mean, now, now I know I have to apply to L3. <laughs> Please, please do. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Nicole, has it sunk in yet that you know you graduated and you're an engineer? Like that's that's wild. It's been like a couple of months since you graduated, but like, how do you feel? Like, how's it? Well, it hasn't even been in a, a whole entire year yet, so mm -hmm. I did. I would say it probably sunk in for me when I hear other people say it, and I have to remind myself sometimes too. Like, I'm an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> It feels so good to say it really does because you all know like you work your butt off in school mm -hmm. and oh yeah i don't know a single person in engineering school that said it was easy I, like, <laughs> them. um so 
knowing that we put that the blood, sweat, and tears into our studies, like it is completely worth it in the end to, to where you are. The I guess I had to adapt to a new lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like I'm gonna assume when you're in college, like you go to the club GBMs because it's like woohoo, free pizza. Like I'm a broke college student. I love yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not the case when you graduate and have a salary paying job I would say so it was a great um adaption <laughs> it must be nice <laughs> oh yeah I can't wait I'm actually uh graduating in August so I'm I'm like so ready to be right there you know it's right around the corner and it's actually really funny you talk about uh you know the experience that you have going through the degree of being an engineer. Uh, I recently had a freshman join one of the research groups and her and I were having a conversation. She was like, you know, like, I'm not really sure about all this. I don't know what to do. And I, and, and I was trying to be as honest with her. I was like, you know, it's not going to be easy. It's not something that if, if you're not ready to handle a, a large workload, you're not ready to handle the stress, the, and I, assume everybody has had a breakdown once or twice during their course of engineering. I was like, if you're not ready to handle that, but, but understand that when you get to where I am and, and I'm not even where Nicole is, when you like, it is so rewarding knowing that all this effort is going somewhere and the, the, the late nights, the constant studying, the, the dealing with the stress, like it, it pays off and I can't wait to be in your position. <laughs> But that's the thing. It doesn't just end at my position. Um, I'm still hearing the stories. Oh, well, happy E-Week to everyone, by the way. Oh, yeah. Happy oh, E-Week. E -week. Um, <laughs> we had provided a ton of virtual E-Week um, seminars, tours um, that you could attend. Um, for a lot of the parents out there, they did like STEM-related activities with their kids. Like they had a ton of different items you could, choo you could choose from. And um, you saw... I guess the intro video that they had to be like, woohoo, e-week, but it was like, you matter to the com company and this is what you contribute to. And you had, I attended a seminar, um, I think it was specifically like for the space segment and they were talking about, or for aviation and they were like, look, like you, you worked on this fighter jet. And then it, there's no better feeling in the world when the pilot actually comes up to you and says like, you helped my life. Like you oh. helped this, make this easier for me. So yeah, like I'm a small piece to a bigger puzzle, but like that almost infinite, the possibilities that keep going and what we contribute to. So it is really, really great. <laughs> That's so true. I mean, it's so true and it's so incredible because yeah, like you said, you are just a piece of the puzzle, but you're an important piece just like everyone else is. If you didn't have one of those pieces, you don't have the final image, don't have the final picture. And, mm -hmm. and having the opportunity that somebody actually comes to you and like, hey, your work help my life like your your work makes my life better that's just so so rewarding <laughs> so oh, I, yeah. absolutely so well congratulations on almost approaching the finish line though <laughs> almost there <laughs> definitely the hardest semester i've had but you know i'm on my way out i'm on my way out ready to get part of the real world and you know, figure out what the rest of my life is going to be like when I'm not a broke college kid showing up to general body meetings for pizza. <laughs> well, that was great that the, the freshman that had approached you, you, you gave her an honest answer. Her? Was that her. It was her. You gave her an honest answer. Um, but it all comes down to your, your self-drive and, and having mentors too, like who's, who are going to to push you and make you help you push your limits too because yeah you could just give up immediately I, I could have not done engineering I know a lot of my engineering professors no offense to anybody listening out there made fun of business majors and said oh uh, this is hard <laughs> go do business um so it, it's all a choice but it, it comes from your self-drive and the passion and whatever you want to give back to the world so my favorite quote to live by and that continues to motivate me every day is from Gandhi saying, be the change you wish to see in the world. Um, and I think that is held true for every engineer, scientist out there. Like no matter what you work on, it's contributing to something impactful in society. So honestly, what career could I ask for that wouldn't follow through that quote so accurately? Um, I don't know if you saw the the rover landing recently. Oh yeah. yeah. I was so 
stunned by the two students that they had selected like for, for the name like it was student essays that they had selected to name the rover um and the girl she she said it immediately she was like oh because they flew them down um to see the rocket launch in 2020 so the girl said, oh, yeah, like when I went back home immediately, I started filling out my college applications for like aerospace engineer and every single one of them, like, why would anybody want to do anything else? <laughs> um, so again, it's not just aerospace, not just mechanical, like all these engineers all make such difference. But, you know, it feels great to say, like, I worked on this or I worked on that. So <laughs> <laughs> right, and that's a. Uh... That's something that I, I can't wait to do because although, you know, I recognize the impactfulness and the importance of engineering. I mean, you see it every day. Uh, I don't know if this is appropriate, but just even referencing, you know, like what happened in Texas, uh, you know, like we need engineers to, to be able to adjust and fix these problems so people don't continue to get hurt and stranded, et cetera. Um, but being in school, it's hard to it's hard to necessarily grasp all that. It's hard to realize completely when you're just doing homework, you're just doing projects, you're knowing theory, theories, theorems, et cetera, whatever. Uh, so hearing you, I mean, even just being a recent graduate, having this experience and showing us that it really is all that's cut out to be like, that's, that's wonderful. And that's also why I love just, you know, having people like you to talk to and people like you to know, to, to remind everyone that like there is, there is that finish line, but also that finish line is just another starting line. <laughs> exactly. That could not have been better said um, with what happened in Texas. I'm sure the gears are turning. It made you think about it. Like they're thinking like, what can I do to prevent this from happening again? And how can I fix a situation like this? Um, so that, that's our job and that's what you're supposed to do. So it's really great that you have even considered it. Um, I would note on that there was a entrepreneur that I met in high school. I don't remember his name, um, but what he said really resonated with me and it was um, keep a, a small journal with you wherever you go. Now you can probably just use your phone. Um, but he said thoughts become things. So if you think of something, like maybe you just figured out the whole solution to prevent that situation from ever happening again, but it slipped your mind. Like you didn't write it down, it's gone and it'll be someone else's idea before you know it. Um, that entrepreneurial side of things, like definitely, I think it, it's with everyone, but they don't usually like let it show. So, so write down those ideas, especially as a student when they're like fresh. And I, I think we should take advantage of the fact that we're young for that engineer that I worked with talking about his ex-wife um he kept commenting like you're young you know like you, you work faster than me like I had my years I know I have my experience but definitely like for speed and, and probably like the thinking that goes through your mind like I think you're a bit faster than I because I'm a little outdated that's how he put it so <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome I think that advice is, is incredible you know ideas do become things and at the end of the day, I think stretches across many disciplines. I mean, uh, engineering, art, everything included, but I love being able to have a concept and bring it into reality. And that's something that I think everyone should be proud of. Like, like you said, if you don't, if you don't do that, someone else will. So if you have an idea and you know in your heart that it's something you want to pursue, just do it. Just do what you can to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, it's really great to hear that this is your whole experience that you finally, you know, feel like an engineer. But, you know, us being Hispanic, I know it's like, it's a reality, but like the older generations see a female to just do the cooking and cleaning in a household. So how does your family feel about you becoming an engineer? Like your whole family, even outside of like, you know, your mom, your dad, your sister. Uh-huh. Um, I guess like, I have stories related to that too. I'll start with my my primary family so my mom mm -hmm. my dad my mom was everything um but she went to school in mexico so she's not familiar with how the school system works here so was, she had a lot of questions like so what are you gonna do like how much did they get paid like how far are you gonna leave the state like she was just um she definitely doesn't want me to leave home type of deal they just i'm in melbourne and it's like an hour and a half away and she's mm -hmm. like that's too far you know so yeah. <laughs> um, that's just the the deep-rooted latin woman's like no i don't want you to leave like no, um of course and then 
my dad, he's Puerto Rican and he's very that traditional, like he thinks women do the cooking, cleaning type of thing. Even though my mom's a very hard worker and worked her whole life, um, my dad just has that traditional mindset. So when I got my internship, he he's very, I guess, shares that tough love. Um, so when I got the internship, I was like ecstatic, like, woohoo, here I am going to Melbourne, here I am. Um, I do this all on my own. Like I earned it. Nobody like gave it to me. I didn't have a connection. Um, that's what I kept telling myself, but he was like, I don't know, I have to see it to believe it. And so it really like, that hurt me, honestly. And I was like, I'll show you like, um, so I shifted it and used it as a motivator to, to prove him wrong and ton of other men. So I'll admit to this. So my ex-boyfriend is also an engineer or studying to be one. And um, he had also said a comment before that said, when I didn't have an internship at the time, I, I was a freshman. He got an internship his freshman year, which was our freshman year, but he had a connection. And so he went over to Lockheed because he met someone. And I was like, well, you, you didn't earn that. Like, I will blatantly tell you that to your face. You did not earn that. It feels good for me to say like, now I earned mine, like all by myself with my work that I did. Um, but he said, oh, well, you're not trying hard enough when I didn't have an internship. So again, oh, no. kind of hurt me too, but it was like, um, I, I could have stopped there. And there's so many points in my life where I could have just, just ended it. I'm like, okay, maybe I'll give in to what they say. Um, but I did the total opposite. I used it as a motivator and said, I'm doing this for me. So I'm going to prove them wrong, which like here I am today. I obviously did. Um, not to say my dad doesn't love me or anything like that, but it was, like I said, that tough love and traditional mindset. Like he doesn't see women in engineering. Um, so it, it was an adjustment for him as well. But now I like prance around when I see him, I'm like, I'm an engineer. And like, <laughs> I make more money than you. Like, <laughs> which I don't, oh God. I don't say that like at all. I respect my parents like unconditionally, but it's like, you know, like in the back of my yeah. head. You know, You're so silly. <laughs> so it does feel good like I said like those moments that I could have just stopped and like done something else um it because those were like really tough comments to endure like from people that were like the closest to me um my sister on the other hand like she she hasn't finished school and she's older than me by four years like I'm 22 years old and um she experienced that same tough love and just that's why she hasn't finished school because she was one of like that type of person's like oh well you, you say this about me so I guess I am that so I'm just gonna stop um so it really comes down to your own like life choices and how you define yourself and how you want to be defined by others so or, or just perceived by others I'm not gonna let somebody else define who I want to be in my life so that's where I am at today I had an aunt um my family is the only one that's like Hispanic, Hispanic, like from mom and dad. Um, so external family, my aunt, um, when I had told her, oh, I'm graduating in a semester. And I knew I was graduating. My plans have always been so clear. Like I, I plan short term, long term. I know what I'm going to do. So then I told her, I was like, yeah, I'm graduating in a semester. Like, that's it. I already have like the job lined up. And she was like, oh, what are you getting your degree in art? And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. I was like, I'm going to be a mechanical engineer. And she was like, oh, and kind of just like brushed it off and like carried on. I wish I was there to see you deliver that line. <laughs> um, and she has two boys, like uh, my cousins. So she has two boys. And so when I said I'm graduating in a semester, she was kind of like, I heard that before, like referring to her sons. And I'm like, well, I'm not your son. Like I am my own person. I'm not getting an art degree. Like I'm getting an engineering degree. So it, it gives me a sense of pride because it's such a powerful career to be in. And again, like to know that I did this on my own without connections makes it even that much more rewarding. Kind of like I'm on top of the world. Like you can see things about me, but it's not going to bring me down. Like it's just going to raise me up. That's all it's going to keep doing. So that, yeah, it's definitely tough. Um, especially being a minority um, actually with being a minority I would say that those are probably the toughest comments I endured from my family but when I moved over to Melbourne um, like I said my roommate actually also works at the company uh, it was with two other roommates so they both work at the company 
and we were like woohoo like we're engineers like we're fresh grads we're making money now we rented a beach house like literally you could walk to the beach so it was like oh we're living the vida loca it's great um when I was moving out of that house because it was like a half year lease I was moving out of that house my dad was helping me move because he had a truck and there's a being by the beach side there's a ton of seafood restaurants you can imagine and we were at the closest one to the house so to get lunch and it was just to get it to go and we were way more than six feet away from the host stand which was already attending to somebody else like an elderly couple um and we had our mask on like there is no reason why they were to I guess judge us for for COVID protocol at least because we we're following it all and the woman looked at her husband and she whispered in his ear after she already like looked us up up and down basically my, my dad and I and I could see that she whispered in his ear and she obviously said that like she made it obvious or it's like turn around but don't make it obvious um so then he, he turns around and looks us up and down I didn't say anything to my dad until after we left um, the restaurant got our food. And I was like, did you notice that couple like in front of us that, that they did that? He was like, yeah, like I'm fairly certain it was a, for a racial thing because um, there's nothing else like mm-hmm. obvious, I guess. Um, so I'm fairly certain it's for a racial thing. He's like, get used to it. Like it happened all my life. That's what he was like advising me. He was like, yeah, and you do get used to it. Like that's just how it is. And for being beachside, like that's just what was there. So even though I didn't experience anything like any type of discriminatory actions at work, it definitely happened where I lived. So, and it's gonna continue happening, honestly. Like I'm prepared for it. I know what's in that area. It's so little in minorities. Like it honestly gives me comfort when I see another like Hispanic <laughs> in the area. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not the only one. But that's just another thing I had to Like, I don't like it, I'll be honest, but if I want it to change, again, I can't just walk away from it. I have to contribute and, like, take those first steps into making a change for somebody else in the future, so. Oh, yeah, and I'm so sorry that you've had to experience, I mean, any kind of discrimination at all, but a very, like, genuine congratulations to you for getting through these things and using these hateful comments as as motivation and i mean not only using it for motivation proving these people wrong and on top of all that you are where you are and you're paving a way for more people like you to follow you know people minorities women everybody like marginalized groups are able to look at you and be like it's not impossible it's it's a goal i can achieve as well she can do it so can i and that's just I don't know. It just makes me really happy. And obviously it's not good that you have to deal with discrimination, but, but I don't know. Uh, I'm personally very proud of you for fighting through everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just sad that, you know, it's still a thing, racism that we have to face, but I think, you know, hopefully it's getting better. Like, again, it's like, I'm a double minority being a woman and then being Hispanic, like I expected it to happen. I know it's gonna continue happening. Mm-hmm. And that's why I, just, I couldn't be more grateful that at least it doesn't happen at work. Yes. So that's how I know, like these are good people. <laughs> and I'm sure there are very traditional men out there. Like, you know, there's mm-hmm. a lot of older engineers, um, engineering fellows. Um, maybe they might think it subconsciously, but at least they don't say, like, say it or yeah. feel uncomfortable in any way. That's what wonderful that you get that experience at your work. What don't you see? Have like you ever faced any sort of like um, discrimination for being like female or like Hispanic? Or no? I mean, that kind of goes back to the, my ex-boyfriend also goes to UCF. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So that there, it was there. Like he was not a minority, and mm-hmm. so him saying I wasn't trying hard enough, or him having that connection, he had a connection through his family side who had who comes from money like my family does not come from money like we're not poor but definitely just do, does not come from money so it, i couldn't let his comments or anything like that even though like we went to the same school we're going to the same classes um i actually the biggest i guess ucf discriminatory thing that happened was specifically with him i was the vice president of ASME and so when we collaborated with a lot of clubs, so I'm so happy to be here, you know, again, um, 
there was a conference we were going to for a project that I had participated in. And it was the first like real hands-on project that I took part of. And so the funding for the clubs, as you guys are aware, like it gets tough like to secure funding or the travel expenses and you have to deal with SGA and all that good stuff. And so there was only a select few that could go to the conference. And I was selected, like full, fully paid to go to this conference to represent my club and amongst like, the other people on my team and like compete in this competition. So I was so like, like over the moon, like woohoo. Like, and I, I think it was the first time I was actually going to travel outside of Florida. And so I, I could not pass up on such an opportunity. And it was a conference. So you're going to meet like other companies out there. And I was hoping that could also, this was before I even had an internship. I think it was my sophomore year. And so I, I had a feeling, I was like, this could lead to an internship, like it's a great opportunity for me. And I was with that said person at that time, he didn't want me going. And his reasoning was, I don't want you sharing a hotel room with guys. And I was like, well, that's not going to happen. Like our clubs mm. <laughs> cannot do that. Um, so that's not a legitimate concern. And then he ultimately admitted, oh, I just don't feel comfortable that there's guys on this trip, like you being around guys. And I was like, you are in the same classes as me, you know, well than anybody else. Like there's only like 20% of women in these classes. So his, he started like, I guess, showing his true colors and saying like, I just don't like you being around men. And I'm like, well, it's too bad. Like that's just gonna be my life. Like that's literally how engineering is. When I go into work, I probably see one girl once a month like that's just how it is wow. like when there are people there there are men and i'm used to it at this point because i know that's just how it is and like yeah things are changing but it's not going to be a change overnight so obviously i say x because i'm not with said person anymore because i had to endure like such <sighs> hurtful and discriminatory items from someone who i thought was close to me so i guess speaking on a positive note with that that's where i met like my greatest friends at UCF because they helped me get through like such a, I guess, dark moment. And it was like, we come from all shapes, sizes, colors, like um, we support you, we'll study with you. And that was like the best thing. I had like such a great study group. Um, I met like the greatest group of friends and they, we clicked instantly. Like we even took a trip to Canada just months after meeting because it was like, we're gonna be the best friends like for life. Like let's go to Canada. <laughs> Um, and it's because we all shared the same passion for theme parks. So we actually like um, saw a video that Canada had the ninth largest, steepest 90 degree drop roller coaster in the world. And I was like, we're going to Canada. Like we're, we are mechanical engineers. We have an admiration for like the theme park industry. Let's go ride that roller coaster. Um, <laughs> we did, we, we traveled to Canada for Canada's Wonderland. And wow. they're still like the, my greatest friends to this day. So I love UCF, you know, for everything it's given me. And I, I couldn't have like done it any other way. Like everything happens for a reason. So I went through like some struggles in my life, but again, where I am today, I just couldn't be more grateful. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm happy to hear that he's an ex knowing <laughs> this information now. <laughs> That's just awful but obviously a lot of positive ultimately came oh, out yeah but, wow no again congrats <laughs> that's you made it you're up there i'm actually a little obviously you know being a white male i don't experience really any kind of discrimination and part of the reason uh -huh. why i came to ucf was because of the diversity because of the focus on the student experience and I guess I'm curious, like, do you guys feel that UCF lives up to their name of being a multicultural, diverse, you know, campus? I mean, I personally would say yes, but again, from my perspective, I don't know if I have the best opinion on that. <laughs> I would agree to that instantly. Yeah. And yeah. I was actually born and raised in Orlando, Florida. Um, so the school was kind of like in the backyard type of thing so uh, Orlando is incredibly diverse so even when you leave campus you're going to see people of all sorts and so that's why I just felt so welcoming to be on campus it was like you, you're gonna find somebody here you're gonna find somebody here like I I didn't feel out of place like despite 
that one person, but I still didn't feel out of place because the campus is so large. You can find a way to connect with someone or some place or something um, that suits your needs. So, I think the thing I love about UCF the most is that there's a club for anything. So like I'm proof, you know, there's Perusa, there's Parasa, there's clubs for any country and you feel so welcome because like that's your people, you know, because same culture, same everything, same mentality, just really cool. So I do agree that UCF does a really good job with diversity overall. But with that same note, you can't get accustomed to to it. Like I said, when I went to Melbourne, I was like, hmm, this isn't like Orlando uh, <laughs> Europe at all, because FIT is over there as well. And I would say like, I met some people at FIT and it's, it's, they're not like UCF, um, yeah. but you, you just adjust to it. Like everyone's different. Um, so I think we all chose a really great school. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so I guess on the topic of UCF, I would like to add that I think it was, it was formerly called Harris Corporation. So that building right across from the engineering building, as much as we all love the engineering building, um, right across there's the now L3 Harris Corporation, L3 Harris Technology Building. So they just mm -hmm. Um, also a nice glass building, just like the one I work in. Uh, so <laughs> it's really nice. Um, so they actually had seminars there since they also like help fund or they contribute to funding for UCF. So like all those nice whiteboard cables that you have when you study for your exams. That's from L3 Harris. That's, you know, that's from us. Um, <laughs> well, so, thank you, L3 Harris. <laughs> it's, it's a big deal. Um, they do care about, you know, education and um, so they do go to, they host seminars and like um, info sessions. That's what they're called. Yeah. They did like info sessions at UCF like several times, especially when it's like before career fair. And so it was right after my internship. And since, like I said, I had those connections that I made during my internship, I got an email saying like, hey, like since you are like still a UCF student and you had that internship experience, we're doing an info session this date that we want to know if maybe you wanted to volunteer to just talk about like your internship. Maybe that'll like reach out to, to the students. Like coming from a student, you'll touch the lives of more students and hopefully they'll like want to apply for an internship or, you know, you'll ease their nerves or whatever the case was. And I don't know if you can tell, but I do like to talk so I was like, heck yeah, like, I would love to do that. And I told my Chris Kabasic story there. <laughs> so it was cool to see like some of my friends, like who I do consider friends, but they're also, I guess, timid and like asking that, that, that type of question because like, they, they feel like it's a bit more personal or something like that. And I'm, I'm an open book, like you can ask away. Mm -hmm. So I was there standing up and there was, I think, three other interns or former interns also there, also UCF students. And I didn't even know them because I was like, well, like UCF is so big. I didn't know you interned here, but that's because I was at this building, you were at this building, like again, endless opportunities available. And so it was really, really great that they still like, I guess, considered you because they want it to be more personal. It's not just a recruiter there talking to you. Like they wanted us to like share our stories or just talk about ourselves answer the questions so there was that great like connection that I had with being a UCF student but also having that internship experience and I'm sure I did like I reached like I had students that I didn't even know coming up to me like oh that was so cool like what do you do like what's your what's your degree specifically and I was like oh my gosh like I'm reaching people's lives like oh. that's so great um so it feels good to give back and I think you know that's something we should do, especially like when you're done, I think you should continue to do. Well, like, right after I graduated, I still attended some ASME meetings. Um, and I know Fern asked me, he's like, but you graduated, like why? Like, why? like, and I'm like, that's my club till the end of time. Like whoever is gonna be in the leadership position at that time, because it, it, it segued my a path for my life as well. Like, you know, it's a great contributor. I credit a lot of like, who I met and like who I came to be through the connections I had in that club. So I'm like, why wouldn't I want to like help that next generation, whoever is coming up with that. So super great connections with UCF, L3 Harris. Um, so it's kind of like that Lockheed CWEP thing. It's not directly like you're going to get a, a career like, opportunity that way. Um, but they're definitely a school that's always on the radar. So doesn't hurt to apply. Definitely, I encourage everyone to apply. 
no, you seem very passionate about engineering. I think Brian can even agree too. Oh yeah. So I guess <laughs> the age old question, you know, why do you pick engineering? So it's actually going to be like an abnormal story. So my career path or the, the final goal is not actually engineering. Like, yes, I'm an engineer right now, but since I was younger, I always wanted to be a lawyer. And so I have a mentor. So it wasn't until I spoke with a, a mentor because she was already an attorney and I was, I was already doing dual enrollment. I was in these like higher level classes because I love math. I really do. And I was good at it. And she was like, oh, like, did you ever like explore patent law? And I was like, well, what's that? And she was like, oh, well, if you pursue like intellectual property, those are the people that grant patents to like to the invention. And so you would, I would work hand in hand with like inventors, entrepreneurs, there's even like um, patent attorneys on site at O3 Harris. I'm sure there's some at Lockheed, North, like all these big companies. It's endless, like the amount of patents that are out there that are available and that continue to, to come up. So I looked into this career and I was like, wow, this is so cool. It's like the best of both worlds, you know? So if I really hate like law at the end of the day, my fallback plan is engineering. I already know I love it. So <laughs> when I was, I guess, already going through like the Diffie Cube, the calc and the physics and those classes, I, it was kind of like fitting. I was like, well, I'm gonna do engineering. And it was like, what kind of engineering? Like, what do I wanna do? I started exploring the type of patents out there. And typically what are granted are utility patents. So that's mainly like on a physical like piece of hardware. And so it, it seemed fitting or it just made sense to choose mechanical because it's so broad. Like I, I, I can go to space if I want to, like, like specifically space, do aviation, I can do automotive. Like it just, the, the possibilities are endless. And so I was like, to be a, I guess, a, more profitable patent attorney, like I could touch more lives with a more generic degree, get a really diversified experience. And hopefully that means I can grant more patents in the future. So I do have intentions of going to law school. Um, this year, actually, I plan on taking the patent registration exam so that if I pass that, when I pass that, um, <laughs> it gives me the title as a patent agent. I don't know what you can do with that yet. But I know you have to pass the <laughs> exam. And then after you do your three years of law school, you pass the bar exam, then you are a patent attorney. So patent attorney specifically, like you can't be one without having a STEM degree. So oh. that's how like, attorneys, they can have it, like you can have any type of degree, business, art, like, you go to law school. Patent attorneys have to have a STEM degree or they have to, I guess, take some sort of exam that like if they don't have the degree they have to show that they have the knowledge like and capability of almost the equivalent of having the degree the degree so it made sense to just get the degree um and I actually wasn't sure like when I had the internship as an engineer I wasn't just, like settled on am I going straight to law school when I graduate or do I work a bit get more experience like I didn't know what was the best route to go like I had a mentor who was an attorney who helped me decide what career path I wanted but I still didn't know how to get there or what was the best way to get there and so it was my group lead when I interned I had like one-on-one -on -one meetings with him like we were so open and I, I told him about it I was like these are my career goals like this is what I want to do and he was actually like in the process of like filing for a patent so he gave me the contact of that person. He was like, talk to this person. She's an electrical engineer. I would say this though. He, he was like, she's an electrical engineer. She has her master's in, in electrical engineering. And when we have our meetings and stuff, she's the one granting me my patent. We don't have to explain anything to her. She's already well-versed in everything. Like, because she worked as one, like she knows what's going on. Like, versus I'm sure like any other attorney you could have, like has to read the books, get like brought up to speed. And so it made sense to me. I was, so he was advising me, like, like, do what you want. But I would say from my experience, like you personally getting like that technical knowledge is more beneficial at, like in the patents that you could grant. So it made sense. I was like, I'm going to work as an engineer. Um, I, or coincidentally, 
my group lead now is the same group lead I had when I interned. So that's why I say like, he knows my career intentions. He knows what I want to do. It's no secret. Um, he actually said, cause I'm sure like companies goals, like they, they want you to stay. They want you to grow within the company. Um, but he actually said, he was like, there is a guy I worked with and he was such a, like a brilliant engineer. And I don't know where he gets up like off his office. And he was like, like I'm putting my two weeks. I'm going to, to grad. I think he's going to become a doctor. And then I'm going to medical school. That's what he, was, he just got up. I was like, I'm going to medical school. And then my group lead was like, I didn't even know he applied there, you know? Like, <laughs> but he was like, that's what he wants to do. That didn't make him any less of an engineer. Like, it, that's fine. Nobody questioned his decision. It was his decision to make. So go for it. Like, they're just here to support you. Do your thing. And so... I guess having that support and having that understanding that that already happened within the company, I'm sure like other people have had similar like experiences, like, you know, you just get up and leave type of thing. Um, but having that, his expertise and his um, advice, I was like, okay, I'm going to work as an engineer for three to five years. That's my plan. So I'm almost down for year one, limiting myself to three to five years. Um, because I know if I, I I'm, I'm honestly enjoying what I do. So I have to put some sort of limit on that. So I don't like stay with it for too long. Cause I do want to like finish my end goal. Um, three to five years of working, go to law school. And, and then, you know, again, like if I don't like law, it's like the death of me. I'm an engineer. Like, that's my fallback. It's really not a bad plan. <laughs> What a uniquely powerful experience. <laughs> like, that's right. so cool. Also, yeah, uh, you know, catch me calling you in 10 years about the next thing I try to, <laughs> try to create. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so incredible. And 10 years is a good, a good time frame to put on that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I think we're uh, starting to wrap up. Yeah. So, Nicole, do you have like any final words, any shout outs, any tips and advice for the viewers? A quote, anything. <laughs> I feel like I kind of already gave that in the recent yeah. conversation. Um, so, I to reiterate my quote. Um, something you feel passionate about, something you want to say, you know? If it's nothing, then let it be silent. <laughs> um, I guess, so definitely I'm passionate about like the minority, so women in STEM. I, whoever, like women watching this, I strongly encourage not to give up. Like, again, there are, there is an easy way out, but who likes the easy way? It doesn't make it like interesting, you know? Um, so don't give up. Don't feel belittled at all. Like we are all equals. We really are. I actually negotiated my salary. So I would advise that to people listening I at like, I had asked my mentor who was an attorney um, for her advice to make it more like grammatically correct and just make sure it sounded proper. And she actually didn't agree with the, the amount that I was requesting. Um, she thought it was actually excessive. And so I was advised, um, so I'm putting this out there for the people applying for the, the big companies I was advised from someone within my company, an attorney at the company, not a patent attorney, an attorney at the company. So he obviously reviews all the contracts, things like that. And he told me, he was like, okay, so he looked up a, a median salary of a mechanical engineer in Florida. And he was like, okay, so this is how much they make. So they're probably gonna give you something in this range. Like usually they give you something in like the lower range cause like whoever is in that range, it also includes like, it's anyone who's like a level one engineer. And so, with that, he was like big companies like the Lockheed, the Boeing's, Northrop, like Elder Harris. Um, he was like, ask for 10,000 more. I was like, 10,000, like that's <laughs> a lot of money. Um, so he was like, ask for 10,000 more. Um, negotiate the salary first um, because like that's what you're gonna be continue to be paid. He was like, if they don't go for the salary, then you negotiate the sign on bonus. Um, but I did, I negotiated the salary. I, I asked for the 10,000 more. I was in the range though. So I, 
confronted confronted him again and I was like hey so do I still negotiate for the 10,000 even if I'm in that median range that you like said was mechanical he's like still go for the 10,000 because it's a good number to where you're not like apparently going way over um but you're not lowballing yourself either so they should meet you not necessarily somewhere in the middle but they're going to to usually give you an, a counter offer and um in my case I got two K more so I was like woohoo my God. Right. out of asking for 10 and then they also bumped up my sign on bonus so uh-huh. even though I didn't, that was them meeting me in the middle so I don't regret it like I, again I was advised from someone within the company to ask for that so I think that's a really good piece of advice to have like for those big companies ask for 10,000 more they don't give you anything then you negotiate the, the sign on um and also there's a chance for relocation like i got it got it like already offered to me right off the bat but um if they don't like i, I do recall there's some people that i knew at ucf they got lockheed offers and they didn't have the relocation offered to them initially until they asked about it and i was like oh, they're hiding me from you um <laughs> <laughs> definitely like ask away um got my offer so asked I think they gave me like two weeks to, to accept or deny it. Um, I just felt like pressured in a way. Ask for an extension. They are not going to be like, she doesn't want it. Guess what? You, you're not going to respond because we revoke our offer. Like, no. Just ask like, hey, like I still need a few moments to think about it. Or I haven't had enough time to, to really look at it. Um, can I extend my acceptance like timeline? And they did for me, I think by a month. So like, it's not the you know end of the world you don't have to feel pressured into making a decision um just I think the best thing to do is ask and if you don't know someone at, like you don't want to ask them directly ask someone else like go on LinkedIn it's a really handy tool to use you don't know who you're going to meet on there if you want to ask me about somebody else in the company you want me to ask an EE like I have EE friends now so <laughs> Um, I feel comfortable asking them. So definitely networking is, is really key in, in where you want to go. Very cool. Thank you so much for that advice. And thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. We appreciate you.